Hi, my name is Sarah Husby, a local real estate agent in the Southwest Puget Sound area of Washington State. In this series of videos, I focus on the home buying and selling process. Are you thinking about buying or selling a home and considering hiring a stager? Today, I've enlisted interior designer Jill Julem to guide us through the staging process and help us understand the best way to prepare your home for the market. Hi everybody, we're here with Jill Julem, interior designer, and it's actually one of my most exciting topics. It's about staging your house to get it ready to sell. So I have some questions for you, Jill. Um, we're currently actually in a new construction home, so mm -hmm. these are a little bit easier to stage. Would you agree? I would absolutely agree. Okay, yep. but let's say I'm wanting to get my home ready and to list and uh, I have not the foggiest idea where to start. So as a stager, what sort of things do you look for and do when it comes to getting a house ready for the market? Well, the first thing that you need to do and one of the most critical things is to clean it top to bottom. It cannot be too clean. It should be, every surface should be pristine. Um, you can clear out all the clutter and take down most of your art with the exception of maybe a big colorful piece that you have over your fireplace okay. or something like that. But you really want to declutter, take down all the family pictures so that a new buyer could walk in and see themselves living here. Okay, so what I hear is clean 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 declutter yes and depersonalize absolutely so i've even been in places where we have football teams up on the walls and that could really really affect uh some of yes. the, the potential clients coming through right? yes sports memorabilia religious memorabilia and your family memorabilia all of those things really need to go away Okay, perfect. So here in the kitchen, the first thing you want to do is declutter all of the countertops. And again, you want every surface to be clean and pristine. Oftentimes people will open a cabinet or a drawer. So you wanna make sure that those are at least tidy. You don't have to have them, you know, super clean, but you want them to be tidied up. Pantries as well. In a kitchen pantry, you want to see as much floor space as possible. Same thing in if you have an island or even if you don't, um, don't leave your kitchen rugs down because it makes the space look a little bit smaller. So the most important thing to remember as you're doing your living room or family room spaces is not to overcrowd it. Oftentimes you'll have a fireplace or a beautiful view window and you'll have multiple focal points but you have to orient the furniture in a way that makes sense to the room so you want to keep all your traffic patterns open typically I keep bigger pieces very neutral and then I use pops of color in the artwork in the pillows and the throws and what that does is in your photography as people are looking at your home online, it gives it more depth and starts to provide a little bit of personality to the space. And then over here in a little nook like this, you just want a potential homeowner to be able to walk into the space and really see themselves here and not have them feel like somebody else lives here. So now we're upstairs in what was designed to be a bonus room so there are lots of practical applications that you can use in a bonus room when you're staging you can furnish it as a TV area I happen to have chosen to angle this sofa because it gives you a good visual from the entry door over there and then the artwork up above the cabinet can mimic a TV and then I put an office space over here just to show people that you could have a home office or a place for kids to do the homework. And then finally, a lot of times during the summertime, I do like to stage a little bit in the 
outdoor areas because it gives people sort of a fresh, happy something to look at. Bright colored pillows, fake flowers, a little color on the floor. It never hurts in your pictures. So in a master bedroom, typically all I like to see as far as staging goes is the bed, a couple of nightstands with some pretty lamps on them, an, a piece of art up above the bed, and then sometimes a rug or a bench at the end of the bed, maybe a plant to soften up a corner or two. The other thing I do want to mention is that lighting is very, very critical. You do not want to put your house on the market with any burnout light bulbs. And if you have a dark room, you need to bring in some accessory lighting so that it brightens it up because you really don't know the time of day. And in the Pacific Northwest, you don't know what the weather is going to be like when people come to see your home. So there are a couple of tricks that I use in staging and this happens to be one of them. This is actually a blow up mattress just sitting on some bins. And for a queen size bed, I typically use king size bedding so that it comes all the way down and it looks nice and neat and pristine. And that is something that I stress to people when I do consultations is to make sure that their bedding looks very, very even, that there aren't any wrinkles in it and um, that it looks as clean and straight as possible. Another trick that we like to use is after the windows have been clean, take out all of the window screens so that you get a really nice fresh view through. And I wouldn't suggest you put your home on the market until you've had your windows professionally cleaned. The other trick that I use a lot of times is area rugs. And area rugs can help bring color into a space. They can help define a specific space. Or if you have any flaws or issues in your flooring, that can really go a long ways to disguising those. So here in a bathroom, one of the things you wanna really focus on again is the cleanliness. You should practically be able to eat off the floor in a bathroom that you're presenting in your home. The other thing that I like to do is I like to layer the towels. And just like with the bedding, you want the fold and and the lines to be perfect. You don't want them cockeyed. You don't want them uh, leaning one way or the other. Um, I've seen pictures of homes online where they didn't even bother folding the towels and it just doesn't present very well. The other thing that I like to tell people and one of the first things that I typically notice when I walk into a home is, is there any odor? Um, if you have pets, or, um, or teenage boys, oftentimes your house has an odor that you may or may not understand whether or not it's there. And always in those cases, what I recommend is a fresh coat of paint and new flooring in whatever carpeted areas you have because the, the old carpeting will tend to really, really hold the odors. Okay, Jill, a couple questions for you. Sure. So um, does if somebody's thinking about getting their house um, staged and ready, do you bring in all sorts of rented furniture or do you use what the existing furniture in the house? It depends. I, I can typically work with the existing furniture in the house. However, I, I really like to do a walkthrough first so that I can tell the homeowner what they're going to need to get rid of because Obviously, for staging, you don't want nearly as much furniture in the house as most people would live with. Okay. So there is a lot of prep work in getting rid of, of things after I do the walkthrough. And when you say get rid of, um, do you just want them to put it in their garage and just get it out of the way? Yeah, typically okay. people will either put it in the garage, oftentimes um, because they're moving anyway, they'll rent a pod or a storage room or that kind of thing. Perfect. So, but it, it's important that if you have too much, it needs to go away because you want the space to feel nice and open. Absolutely. Yeah. 
I can tell you as a realtor, when I'm looking at um, a new listing that comes live and they've gotten professional photography and it's been professionally staged, uh, it speaks uh, volumes compared to something where um, somebody has done their own photographs from their own iPhone, they've uh, not staged at all, and there's clutter everywhere. And just as a consumer, I, I, I swipe on buy. I'm not interested in a, um, a listing like that. So I know that um, you actually can get five to 10% more for your listing um, mm -hmm. on average just it's, by staging, right? Sure, it's been scientifically proven that you will get not only more money, but your home will sell more quickly if it's professionally staged. Absolutely. So, so um, how does someone get a hold of you? Do you do consultations? I do offer consultations and those can be really valuable for people who are, you know, this close to having their home ready, but they need, they need some help. And oftentimes, you know, I go through room to room to room and oftentimes it's just the little things, the little details that you need to touch on with them to get them really ready for photography. Perfect. Okay. And I and I I can provide consultations or I can provide a full on staging service. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. So how would we get a hold of you? Uh, by phone or by my email. My phone number is 206-919-7165 or you can reach me at Jill Julum, J I L L J U L U M at gmail.com. Perfect, and I'll make sure that that pops up as she's talking so everyone sees that. Well, Jill, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us a tour of this beautiful house and just kind of some tips and tricks on uh, how you uh, go about staging a home. Thank you for having me, sir. Absolutely. It's been fun. All yeah. right, thanks everybody. Bye.